One may think that this programmer 2 is going to go in the H. Palmer list, but it's not. R.A. Nicholson is best known for his translation of the Masnavi, and he's also better known for a handful of other works. Um, so here's the introduction. At the beginning of the 7th century of our era, Arabian ethnic religion, I want to change that because pagan, heathen, infidel, Gentile, it's not terms that I feel are appropriate for using, or I, oh, cares what I feel, um, not terms that I've concluded are appropriate for, you know, for using the pe people that are just of a different tribe or a different religion or something like that, because they mean something a bit different, um, was showing signs of a decay. The influence of Judaism and Christianity is seldom deep, was not confined to the numerous clans which had embraced one or other of these religions, but had made itself felt, as the pre quranic poetry bears witness, amongst those who were still attached by custom and tradition to their tribal entities. We hear so much of Christian hermits and also of a few persons known as Hanifs. I don't remember the plural, but it's not something with the S at the end. Um, we had rejected idol uh, who had rejected idolatry for a religion of their own, ascetic and monotheistic. Muhammad appears to have been in touch with some of them before his call, in a word, acquaintance with higher and pure ideas, had shaken faith in the old order of things, and shadows cast by the coming event were already visible. For us, Muhammad's earlier life is almost a blank sense. On this subject, the Quran gives little information. While the accounts of Muslim writers contain far more fable than fact, well, a lot more scrutiny to prevent um, speculation and stuff, but there was stuff being passed around, whether it was from the Jews and the Christians or the, uh, or the rest of the Arabs, um, whether people, you know, but that's, that's a very minute thing comparatively. But perhaps the prophet, uh, just like George Sale, the prophetic tradition doesn't seem to have as much importance as the poets do um, to uh, Ari Nicholson. Um, but at, le at least in that, when he wrote that phrase, it may be taken as certain that he came of humble stock, passed his youth in poverty, and gained a respectable position through his marriage to Khadija. His journeys with the trading caravans of Mecca afforded opportunities for conversation with Jews and Christians, of which the Quran preserves the result. If prophets are like poets, then what made Muhammad a prophet will never be known. Whether we regard it as a pathological case or a grand example of mystical ecstasy, the thing is essentially inexplicable, Through, though at the outset of his mission, a dominating motive can be discerned in his conviction that the last judgment was near and that he must, at all costs, warn his countrymen of the doom impending that he believed himself to be the messenger of God seems to me beyond doubt. Any other view involves the paradox that a world religion claiming at the present day over a hundred million adherents, you know, this is written over a hundred years ago, it's now about two billion something, was founded by one who, not being peculiarly religious, was nevertheless capable of something of stimulating religious enthusiasm so perfectly that his first essays in that style constitute for all Muslimin, and even for many who are not Muslim, the clearest possible evidence of his prophetic genius. He was, first and foremost, a revealer who uttered by inspiration truths which lay beyond the ken of his listeners. 
but which came with the conviction of reality when they were heard. The prophet's chief qualification was vision rather than logical power of learning. But that was connected too, of course. His speaking was apparently unpremeditated, of rapturous utterance, as though a power not himself were using him as a vehicle of a communication. Those who read in Arabic the chapters of the Quran revealed at Mecca, now passed at the end of the sacred volume, will have no difficulty in applying the above description of what they call the New, the New Testament prophet to Muhammad. You know, the one predicted. To say that the rest of the Quran is on the whole uninspired does not mean that its author was conscious of fraud when he gave out all sorts of regulations and instructions in Allah's name, Allah being, of course, the singular and definitive for God, particularly used by monotheist and monotheistic. Christianity is not monotheist, it's monotheistic. Um, where by force of circumstances, the prophet in him had grown into the ruler and legislator. It was a psychological necessity that he should still feel himself to be the chosen medium for the divine message. The child is the father of man. He was addicted to the practice of solitary prayer, especially during the night, and may well have cultivated it for the purpose of inducing the abnormal states which caused his enemies to describe him as possessed by the jinn, you know, the fallen angel, the fire being, the hidden beings, the males and females that people that include those that people consider to be gods and goddesses. It's important to observe that this practice was associated in his mind with the idea of revelation. The opening verses of Surah 73, O thou who art enwrapped, rise. Stand up in prayer by night, except a little, the half, or deduct therefrom a little, or add thereto, and chant the Quran, chanting. Verily we will cast on thee a heavy speech, a weighty word, surely depict the process by which many of the early revelations came. According to tradition, Muhammad was keeping vigil on a night of Ramadan in or about the year 610, when he saw the vision of an angel who seized him with a strong grasp, recite, crying, Recite Ikra, and after the prophet had thrice refused to obey, himself recited the words that now stand at the beginning of Surah 96. This is said to have been the first recital, Quran, a term applicable to each of the succeeding revelations known collectively as the recital, Al-Quran, although Muhammad could not presume to think that what he heard was the voice of God. He never doubted its divine origin or believed that he himself had any part in shaping the form of the revelations as they were brought to him by the Spirit, whom he afterwards identified with Gabriel, on the contrary, he conceives them as excerpts communicated in the Arabic tongue from a heavenly book inscribed on a preserved tablet, whence are derived all prophetic revelations, including the Jewish, Christian, and Zoroastrian scriptures. So, revelation isn't something composed, it's something received. Um, And that's one way to express it. Um, between these and the Quran, there is no essential difference. The Quran is in the scriptures of yore and confirms their truth. As Allah is one, so is his revelation one. So his revelation is one. This idea, momentous for the future of Islam, Raise some awkward questions. 
Is the divine original fixed and and unalterable? Obviously not. The Quran often, well, the Quran never contradicts itself, but it does conflict with um, what's considered to be earlier scriptures, although if you look at the Bible versus the Quran, you're going to find that the Bible contradicts itself more than the Quran contradicts it. So, um, but no one's been able to find any contradiction in the Quran. People say that phrase, but they never prove that such things occur. Um, Allah then changes his mind and alters the text of the heavenly book accordingly. Surah 1339. That, that's not quite the way to, that's not a, a, that's a misleading way to state that, but, um, you know, each nation has its, has its rules, but, you know, it's, it's not some dispensationalist, you never, you know, basic stuff is going to be switched around or basic theology or something. It's, that's not what's being said in the Quran itself. I mean, such is the famous doctrine of abrogation stated in Surah 2. Under whatever verse we may annul or cause thee to forget, we bring a better one than it, or one like it. Dost thou not know that God is mighty over all? To the prophet, of course, this solution presented some, uh, none of the difficulties which occur to ordinary men. His belief in a pre-established harmony of the Quran with ancient scriptures was maintained, but with slight reservations even at Medina, where both Jews and Christians criticized his statements regarding books, which he confessed himself unable to read. But, as he was not in a position to fall back upon Dr. Johnson's plea of sheer ignorance, he countered their attack by alleging that they and their co-religionists had corrupted and falsified the Pentateuch, Psalms, and Gospels for their own ends. And it appears none of those books, none of those books were... um, you know, written by any of the prophets there. Um, now, Paul and his buddies may have written some stuff, but um, there was about over 10,000 changes to what we call the New Testament, even the books that, you know, the books that have been included, I mean. That many variations in Greek, and the vast majority of them are not linguistic things. You have whole verses that are added and stuff that's subtracted and some things, uh, some of the books are bigger by chapters. And you find less variation in one chapter, uh, in the whole Quran, than you find in a chapter of Genesis. Um, but you don't find the contradictions formed in these um, variations, which are linguistic in actuality. One of the most disconcerting features of the Quran, its lack of connexion and cont- continuity. Well, if you pay more attention, you kind of get it sound wise and otherwise. Is partly due to the way in which the existing text was compiled. During the Prophet's lifetime, the revelations followed each other at brief intervals, and some of his hearers would learn them by heart or perhaps write them down on any material that came to hand. But neither he nor anyone else seems to have thought of collecting them in a form that would secure their permanence only after his death, when disputes arose concerning the text. Well, there were people writing down from the beginning, though, but... And when the number of those who carried it in their memories was rapidly decreasing, was the need for a complete and accurate recension of the Quran felt to be urgent. The details are an authorized edition Oh, the details are uncertain, but we know that the Caliphate of Uthman, of Uthman that in that in the Caliphate of, of uh, in the Caliphate of Uthman an authorized edition was prepared by Zaid ibn Thabit. The Prophet's Amen Yunsis with the assistance of three colleagues. The 
This edition, which contains the Quran in its present form, soon gained universal currency, while its value as a genuine record of the Prophet's teaching and preaching cannot be impugned. The contents are in such a state of confusion that to read the book through from beginning to end is to miss all its significance as an historical document. Well, as much as it's historically accurate as far as modern historians can show, um, that's not quite the point. Um, you know, because they're saying, well, that the Bible had, you know, beginning to end sort of thing going on, Genesis to Revelations, but um, but an effectual text, you kind of get it when you look at the themes and how this one connects to the next one and all that. Um, and if you were to mix it up, you wouldn't get those connections sound-wise and theme-wise and numerically even. Granting that the editors could not possibly have arranged the whole series of revelations in the exact order in which they were delivered, well, Muhammad said not to, we must accuse them of ignoring chrono chronology entirely. The plan they adopted was very simple. The place of each surah and each verse, being determined by its length and the longer ones preceding the shorter. Well, no, you find out that it's very easy to point out how that's not true. Um, and you find all narrations about every chapter in the Quran um, indicating where these verses and these chapters would go in the place of the Quran. Had this principle been reversed, readers would have been, would have had less cause to complain, for in the earliest suar, the words are few and strong, contrasting strangely with the copious but somewhat pedestrian eloquence of those revealed at Medina, four of which to be incompatible with the unity of God. And when this and when his overtures to the Jews based on their recognition of the Quran as the book of Abraham and Moses was revealed with mockery and scorn, he looked back to Mecca. Henceforth, every Muslim was to pray with his face toward the Kaaba, while the pilgrimage, stripped, if not completely purged of superstition, was installed as one of the five pillars of Islam. And there's indications in the Bible about a pre, you know, idolatrous um, instance of the thing, but in compatible with the unity of God. Well, no, saying that God um, instructs the spiritual hierarchy and there's no intercession, uh, you know, you don't turn to something that the intercession requires God's permission and God's rules in the first place and people are, the pious are only supposed to intercede, you know, for those who would deserve it in the first place, kind of like make their prayers conditional, uh, that sort of thing. Um, so again, this not compatible with the unity of God. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Um, that the Quran, the little word, the literal word of God, is in all respects unique and inimitable, is an article of faith with Western students approaching the subject without religious prepossessions are not likely to endorse. On the other hand, they will do the Quran less than the justice if they measure it by common standards. Considered as a literary work, it has many defects, which cannot be mentioned. But clearly, it is not a literary work in the sense that the Bible is. You know, it wasn't compiled from sacred history over generations and edited and edited, and, uh, you know, um, and translated and By edited, I mean interp interpolated, because if it's supposed to be the word of God, even inspired word of God, you can't really do that. Um, it was addressed to the ear, not the critical eye. It was, well, it directs people to use their critical thinking. It was uttered by a living voice that impressed those who heard it with the power and enthusiasm of the speaker. It made a personal appeal. Moreover, its doctrines were new to the great majority of Muhammad's countrymen were in very truth a revelation of things they never dreamed of and could hardly believe or understand. Well, 
they were invited to what they didn't know through what they did know. And you find that as a role model. Uh, all the prophetic figures find the same thing. In order to judge the Quran fairly, we must see the time and the place and the prophet all together. He sought to convert by imbuing them with Christian and Jewish theology. Well, then why did he not pick up the conflicts and stuff? Sir Eglos is very, you know, uh, Sir 112 is, you know, not problems with God's unity. It's establishing it more firm than ever, but not with the mystery of the Trinity, not somehow being the same sort of Godhead as uh, it, it's polytheism if anybody else says it, but as a Christian, it's not, it's well, that, that alone is the super mystery, right? A people, you know, the Jews and Christians, who had only the dimmest and vaguest conceptions of a future life and whose language, therefore, furnished no religious terms for the conveyance of such ideas. The poverty of Arabic in this domain may have stimulated his poetic invention. And he wasn't no known for poetry and stuff like that before, or... Um, And Islam does not teach that Arabic is the superior language. It only teaches that the Quran's in Arabic, that the prophets' inspired sayings were in Arabic. That it's, that's a uh, material fact. I mean, if you don't believe in anything spiritual, you have to admit that Muhammad was an Arabic speaker. Um, it has been pointed out that the descriptions of paradise in the Quran resemble passages in which the bards that depict earthly scenes of carousal and merrymaking. Whether the prophet drew from this source or not, in the Meccan Swar especially, he used the most vivid and striking imagery to describe the terrors of the Last Judgment and the tortures of the damned. If his hearers found the subject novel, the style, at any rate, was true to tradition. And wouldn't you have to have a different message come out when you can, when you say things quick, or when you can sit down for a couple hours and, you know, give a, give it out? Um, the way of speaking would definitely seem to be different. I would think that would be. I mean. The most effective for those situations. Um, its parent, however, is not the highly developed and artificial poetry which embodies the ideals of the pre Quranic age, and for the most part is thoroughly ethnic in sentiment. Muhammad lacked the skill to make metrical verses while his opinion of those who practice the art may be learned from Surah 26, 24, uh, 224 to 226. And the poets do those follow who go astray. Dost thou not see that they wander distraught in every veil, and that they say that which they do not do? And it's... See, if you pay attention uh, to what that implies, it's not criticizing people for mere poetry. But, but the Arabs had long been acquainted with professional exponents of supernaturalism, wizards and soothsayers, whose oracles were couched in a sort of rhymed prose. Such. There was no other model available for the first book in Arabic prose, and Muhammad inevitably adopted it. But... Other language experts, whether they are Muslim or not, have admitted that neither the Arabic term "saj" and the uh, the poet, the, you know, the poetry, both of them have things about them that don't apply to the Quran. The Quran, as regards its literary form, is a link between the old epoch and the new. An author who fashioned a style for himself. Out of a rude, jingling oracles may be excused for 
worse faults than modern critics have discovered in his words. They sometimes forget that he never wrote it and that the most effective speeches are seldom flawless in dictation or taste, not to mention grammar. And in Arabic, again, there's no criticism from the Arab, uh, from, uh, in the Arabic of this, but in English, to the English mind, it kind of comes off odd at times, though its abruptness and... Seeming incoherence, you know, as, as far as what people would want it to be, maybe, um, but not in itself, um, may offend. These qualities belong to the character of Arabian eloquence, which bursts out in flashes and refuses to burn with a steady flame. And the latter surahs, the style, often sinks into a flatness and a monotony tiresome to us, though not unexampled. And our own scriptures, well, really exampled in his own scriptures, find one pass, uh, find more than a verse or two in any other scriptures that can maintain the linguistic eloquence. Um, by comparing the Quran with these, we place ourselves in the least suitable attitude for judging it rightly. If anyone can see how little its claim to confirm and perfect the teachings of the former prophets is worth, Muhammad, well, again, you know, the, the Bible makes clear that that was something that either had to be done or something that could be done. Muhammad picked up all his knowledge of this kind by hearsay, you know, by revelation, basically. Um, and he makes a brave show with such borrowed trapping, trappings, largely consisting of legends from the Haggadah and the Apocrypha, but he doesn't pick up the problems with those. Um, but we must not. Uh, but we must get behind that. The essential truth about the Quran is not that it is a garbled version of the old scriptures, but that the whole work bears the stamp of a creative personality in conflict with the traditional ideas, only against the background of Arabian traditionalism from which it sprang, can it be viewed in its true proportions unless we keep in mind the abominations as Muhammad deemed them of the system he was sent to overthrow, we shall fail to recognize the original and distinctive form which he imposed on his revolutionary doctrine. That doctrine is neither Judaism nor Christianity. It is Islam. The product was national, though most of the ingredients were imported as an eminent Orientalist has remarked, the character of the new religion was very powerfully influenced by the manly spirit of some of its first confessors and champions. And of course, you had inflections that were purely feminine and stuff too. Uh, but the good and the bad qualities of the Arabs among whom it arose and for whom it was in its first instance promulgated have stamped their unmistakable impress upon it. So a lot of the stuff that people are going to blame Islam for, it's not Islam, it's um, certain other people. So look at, look at what's actually taught. So long as the prophet lived, his personality was all that mattered. Well, no, he didn't make it about his personality, his personal taste. He made sure that people didn't consider that legislated. And afterwards, when his followers were forced to return for guidance to the Quran alone, their first care was the holy war, which is a phrase that only made it into Arabic after the crusades or during the crusades or something like that but we can leave that aside for now because jihad doesn't mean holy war except in english well i mean the english form of jihad means different than the arabic form which he had preached and inaugurated for whatever weight we may attach to such motives as hungry and rapacity the wretchedly armed bedouins who hurled themselves against the empires of rome and persia must have felt that the law was fighting for them. Well, they were fighting for in defense of themselves and in defense of the innocent people there and freed the Christians and other people who were being oppressed. Um, but And that death was a sure passport to paradise. 
Ere a century had elapsed, the Quran was being recited in Samarkand and Toledo. Since the verbal inspiration of the Bible has been maintained by some theologians even in this country till the comparatively recent days, we need not wonder that the Muslim reverence for the Quran culminated. You know, even if you don't look into it further. About 200 years after the Hijra, in the dogma that is that it is the eternal and uncreated word of God, which is something they probably said because of their encountering the Jews, um, but God's words creating the universe, so was the universe eternal? No, uh, no, so that's not what they're... Um, the same sort of logic doesn't pan out. The absolute authority by which it exercises as such in every department of Muslim life and thought was gradually modified in practice by the development of various supplementary sources and principles. Well, actually, the sources got bigger, but the uh, the actual amount of information transmitted was getting smaller. The principles which enable it to move with the time sooner or later, while much of the perspicuous book is equivocal or obscure. That it has been quoted on both sides in all the great historical controversies of Islam and will be no doubt in those that are to come amongst the Orthodox, there are signs of discontent with traditional methods of interpretation. Yet the critics hold fast to their belief that the divine nature of the text here indicated that all Muslimin are united. If we do not share that belief, we can still acknowledge the extraordinary importance of the Quran for students of history and religion, its vast influence upon the minds and lives of people's widely different culture, and its particular interest as a work in which the last great Semitic prophets gave his message to the world. So we certainly have the power of faith, the power of use. You have the... Um, the fact that it has continued to have different meanings, its essential clearness, but it has 